Hello and welcome. This is Dr. Vector. In this video, I am going to teach you how to write a text-based version of the famous Wordle game in C under 20 minutes. You will also learn some basic coding constructs that are crucial to create an interactive program in C. Let's begin. If you follow any social media these days, you probably have heard of this Wordle game. Started in late 2021, this little game created by a programmer called Josh Wardle became an internet phenomenon. In the beginning of 2022, over 300,000 people have played this game. And just a week after, over 2 million have played it. People posted in their social media and TV shows started featuring it. And as of February 2022, New York Times has acquired this game from the creator for a quote-unquote low seven figures. Not bad. By now, you should probably know what this game is about, and I have also explained the rules in my other video. So I'm just going to post a link in the description in case you want to know about it and learn how to write it in Python. Here, I'm going to write the same program but in the C programming language, which is going to be a bit trickier as it has a slightly lower level code. I'll also be including an improvement based on a comment someone left in my previous video pointing out that in some cases, because of that, it will take slightly longer. But by the end of this video, you will not only be able to create your own version in C, but also have a deeper understanding of this program. So let's again talk about how the game works while we write the code. The game should first choose a word from a collection of words randomly. Here we also put all our words in a separate file called words.txt, like this. This allows us to easily add, remove, or modify any word easily without touching the program. Say if you want to change this word into another word, you can simply just go to this file and change it the way you want. Now because of that, we also need to write the code to load the word from this file and later on randomly select a word. And this is how we do it. We switch over to this C programming environment and before we can do anything, we need to include a few libraries. What these libraries do it is it allows us to use the functions from some other definitions that we don't have to code ourselves. So I'm going to type a few libraries that we are going to use in this program. So we're going to use the standard IOH. We're going to use the standard library. .h. We're going to use string .h here. We're also going to use, oops, sorry about that. Time.h over here. And lastly, we are going to use the standard Boolean library over here. Let's jump into the main program of uh, this game. In C, what we need to do is we need to put all this code into a function called main, which is basically the entry point of our program. So the way to do that is we're going to define a function called main. And then we are going to do a bunch of stuff here. The typical way of creating a main function is that we will return the value zero to indicate that everything uh, is done correctly and no um, error has occurred. Now, so the first thing we want to do over here is we're going to create a list to store all the words. So to make it a little bit easier for us to trace the code, we're going to just say uh, load the words here to help us to just quickly keep track of things. In C, we need to use a character pointer array to store a word, which is also called a C string. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a an array of character pointers where each of these pointers are going to point to a word, which is a C string, as I explained. So to do that, we're going to use character pointer and pointer and then we call it words, let's call it words list. Now we are going to use this um, 
function called callocate, which allows us to request a certain amount of memory over here. This function requires two parameters. The first one is how many things you want to store. And the second parameter is what is the size of each thing you want to store in terms of memory. So we're going to provide these two things. Since we need to remember the size of that, for simplicity's sake, we are going to create a constant over here. Let's say this game only takes in at most 100 words. We can change that later on, but let's say we take in at most 100 words. So what we're going to do is at this top of this program, we're going to define a constant. Let's call it um, maximum number of words. And let's call it 100. So we will have at most 100 words in this program to choose from. Okay. So let's go back to here and we're going to use this value to indicate, you know, I need at most this number of words. And then each of them is going to be of a size of a character pointer because this is the thing that we're going to use to remember or to label or refer to a word or a C string in this program. Next, we're going to keep track of the number of words that we are going to load in because it doesn't always have to be 100 words. Since, say in our words file, we only have 26 words. So we're going to have a variable, let's say word count, to remember the number of things or number of words that we're going to load in. So we begin with no words. Next, we're going to allocate yet another set of memory so that every time we load the word, we'll be able to store that in our program. So what we're going to do is going to have a character array, our character pointer. Let's call it five letter word. And we're going to use M or it's called memory allocate to do that. So memory allocate requires only one parameter, which is how much space you want to have. So here we are going to store a five letter word. Now in C, in C, when we're using C string, we need one extra space to store a special character to indicate that this is the end of that C string. So since we have five letters, we have five characters plus one special character, which means we need a space of six. So what we need is we're going to six times the size of a character like this. Okay, so we have set up the things that we can use to store things. So next, of course, we are going to open the file and load things in. So how do we do that? So we're going to create a file pointer and we are going to call it words file. Let's call it words file. So I'm going to open this file by calling a function called fopen. And fopen expects us to tell it where the file is. So it's called words.txt. And we're going to say that, you know what, I'm just going to read the file. I'm not going to do anything to write the file or modify the file. So I'm going to provide another parameter to indicate this is the case. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to load all those words from this file. The best way to do that is to use a while loop. So we're going to use while. So a while loop, basically, you need to provide a condition so that it knows whether it should stop or continue. The way to remember or to determine how to continue is you ask yourself, what is the as long as condition? So as long as this happens, you should continue. So this is how you do it. Now in C, you're going to provide this uh, condition in a, in, a, in a pair of parentheses. So we're going to do the following. We're going to load in a word or a line at a time. And to do that, we can use the function fscanf. And then we're going to provide a few parameters. The first one is basically the where which file or the file pointer. So I'm going to say words file. And it's going to tell the function what kind of format do you expect to read things in. So here I'm going to expect to return uh, to read in a string. So I'm going to say read in a string in this format. Then you're going to tell F scan F, where do you put the result? So I'm going to put in to the five letter word location, so which is over here. Now, this function will perform what it's supposed to do, and it will actually return something to us, a value. 
Now this is useful because when it reaches the end of the file, it will return a very special character or special value called end of file uh, value. We can use it to check whether it has actually finished reading. So it's EOF. So what this means is that as long as you can, um, you have not reached the end of the file, so the function does not return this special value, continue. Now we want to add one more thing to here because we don't always have this, uh, you know, 100 words over here. So we want to make sure that we, um, but when we reach 100 words, we stop reading because that's the maximum amount of words we want to have. So what we want to do is as long as you haven't reached the end of the file, and at the same time, your word count is still less than what you are supposed to be reading. So in this case, we're going to use the max number of words. So max number of words. Now, if that happens, then you're going to read things in. How do we do that? What we want to do is we are going to have, remember that we have this character, uh, sorry, this character star pointer array, and we are going to use one element at a time to remember those words. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say words list and I'm going to use the word count as our index and I'm going to say okay well remember what this is. So five letter word and that is how we remember it. Now of course we need to increase the count by one because now we have one more word in read read in. So word count at by one. My plus plus in C means that add one to the original amount uh, um, value. Now the next thing we want to do is we are going to uh, allocate another six boxes or array to store the next word, right? So they don't overlap each other every time we read things. So the way to do that is we're going to repeat what we did earlier. Five letter word equals to allocate another set of memory, and again we're going to use a size of six of a size of six characters like this right so this is how we can read things in and uh, we can um, continue with the rest assuming that we have loaded in all the words over here then we can start our game so let's say uh, start the game what do we do in the in the beginning of the game we want to first pick a word right, so let's say pick a word randomly so in C, the way to create a random number is by using the function as rand or rand. But the way C actually creates a random number is it starts from what we call a seed number. So if you use the same seed number, it will have the same sequence of random value. So what we normally do in C is we first call a function called as rand, and we are going to pass in a parameter called time zero or now over here what it allows us to do is that when the time when we run the program which is of course different every time then we're going to use that time as our seed value so essentially what it allows us to do is our random generator is going to start with the seed value differently each time so once we set this up we are going to randomly select a word from our word list so here what we want to do is we are going to have a character pointer which uh, we name it as answer and then we are going to say okay well I'm going to pick a thing from a word from a words list and I'm going to call it the random function. So the random function is a function that will generate a number, return a number to us. Um, the range of this random value is about, starts from zero all the way to a theoretical maximum number uh, that C can support. But we don't need that really high big number. So what we want to do is we're going to use the word count as kind of like upper bound and we use a modulus to make sure that it is always less than um, the value of word count. Right. So this is how we can uh, randomly pick the um, the answer or the, the word that the player is going to be guessing. The next step we're going to do is we are going to do the loop. So I'm going to say do the loop or the game loop, let's say the game loop. So there are two things, remember that there are two things this game is going to do. It is going to keep track of how many times the player has guessed and if any guess they get is uh, correct. The best thing to do that is to use the uh, while loop coding construct. 
which again essentially says as long as the number of guesses is less than six, and at the same time, a correct guess has not been made, repeat the following. To start with a, a while loop, we are going to set up a few conditions. So I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to uh, keep a record of the number of guesses. So num of guesses. And then we're going to start with zero guesses. There's no guess in the beginning of the game. Next, we're going to keep track of whether the guess has been done correctly or not. Here, we're going to use a Boolean variable, which essentially has either a value of true or false. In C, it doesn't actually uh, recognize uh, the Boolean type variable by default. So what we need to do is we need to include a definition of that, which is why we include stdboll.h over here, or standard boolean.h here. So once we have that, C knows what a Boolean variable is. We're going to say guessed correctly. Now, in this case, of course, it is not yet guessed correctly because no guess has been made, so that's fine. One more thing we want to do is that every time the user type in a guess or the player types in a guess, we need to re remember what that guess is. In C, we are going to do um, request another mem or allocate another memory to do that. So we use guess, and then we can use the same thing, memory allocate. And again, because it's a five letter word, we need a special character to store the end of the C string. We're going to use six characters in total. Size of character. Right. Now with all this set up, we can go into our while loop. So we have while, and that as long as the number of guesses is less than six, and at the same time, the correct guess has not been made, here we are going to use the exclamation mark over here, which means not uh, in um, Boolean logic. Now inside, we are going to repeat a bunch of stuff. So we are going to first get the guess from the user, and then we are going to use the function like we did in our previous video with Python. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and get the, say, get guess from the user or let's say player this time. Okay. So we're going to at least tell the player um, what to do. So here we're going to use the printf function to do that. Printf function asks us to first format or the string that you're going to print up. So I'm going to say input a five letter word oops, and press enter. Okay. And we are going to Continue and the next step is we're going to read in from a user. In C, the way to read in from a user is to use scanf. So scanf, I'm going to say, okay, well, read in as the following format, which is a string, and then put this answer into guess. So if you compare this with the f, -S -F, -F scanf, it is very similar, except that we don't need the uh, file pointer because this actually reads from the console. There's no need to know which file from which you are going to uh, to read. So the next is we're going to provide a feedback saying that, okay, well, uh, I have just print, uh, sorry, I have just read in uh, something, right? So I'm saying you have guess something, something. So I'm going to put in this format over here and I'm going to provide the feedback, which is now what the guess is storing over here. Yeah. Now, don't forget that after the player has made a guess, uh, we are going to increment the number of guesses by one. So we're going to say, say, let's use this format. Number of guesses by one. All right. Then the next thing is we're going to use a function to process the guess uh, every time the same way. So I'm going to say process guess. Okay. So let's assume that it is going to tell us guess correctly and then it is going to be calling the function let's say uh, pro says guess and I'm gonna give it the answer also give it a guess so that it can provide the correct clue all right 